polypeptide hormones so this polypeptide hormones means uh, that, that is composed of amino acids so they are uh, protein in nature so this uh, prolactin hormone it is a single uh, single polypeptide chain composed of 199 amino acid residues so in previous you have studies this one tsh uh, this lh ff fsh so these these are the these this contains are two polypeptide chains and here this prolactin it is composed of a single polypeptide chain and it contains 119 amino acid residues and its mass is approximately 23 kilo dalton <clears throat> so this uh, prolactin uh, human placental lactogen and growth hormone they all have a ancestor a common ancestor gene so that's why uh, these hormones the, the, the these hormones these prolactin human placental lactogen and growth hormone they are structurally similar so structurally homology so that is called as a similarity in between these uh, three hormones so because their structural similarities uh, this pro, uh, sometimes uh, they can choose as a cross immune reactions so immune cross reactions so this is the uh, structure of uh, this one prolactin hormone so it is a single uh, polypeptide chain and that contains a uh, three intra sulfide bonds so secretions uh, this predominantly this prolactin hormone it is se se secreted from uh, lactotrophs of anterior pituitary gland apart from that this uh, prolactin it is also expressed and secreted in the brain hypothalamus placenta and the amnion so predominantly it is secreted from anterior anterior pituitary gland apart from that it is also secreted in the other parts also uh, like in brain hypothalamus placenta and amnion so the label of this prolactin hormone so it have a Uh, this duodenal variations and pulsatile uh, this variation so uh, generally the the secretions of this prolactin hormone it starts early in the fetal stages so uh, in a, uh, this uh, prenatal stages and uh, the concentrations is declined shortly after birth and remain low in male and in female it increases with a pregnancy reach maximum level at terms and remains high during lactation so an average of 13 nanogram per ml in women and in 5 nanogram per ml in men so you can see that these different ranges these variations uh, this range of uh, this plasma concentrations of pro prolactin so generally in case of uh, this in female that in pre pubertal period and after menopause its concentration is uh, very low so that is 2 to 8 in fertile period so its its concentrations is around 19 to 14 so early pregnancy so that means uh, after the pregnancy uh, for the this prolactin hormone secretions and synthesis that is gradually increase and it increases uh, it reaches maximum at the late uh, at a uh, term that means a uh, late pregnancy and uh, it will be increase state up to the after this postpartum also up to the 8 to 10 weeks so after that only it gradually decreased so mechanism of actions so this prolactin hormone it acts it shows its uh, response uh, through the tyro tyrosine kinase uh, signaling so generally the, the mechanism of action of this prolactin is associated with a it is jack so that is a zynus uh, tyrosine kinase uh, pathway so jack pathway method so uh, it's the receptor of prolactin so it is a, a single transmembrane uh, receptors generally presents in a targeted tissues so when uh, this uh, this receptor is associated with a this one zynus uh, tyrosine kinase uh, Uh, zynus kinase, uh, zynus tyrosine kinase, 
So when this prolactin hormone it binds with its receptor on a the on a targeted tissue, uh, it activated the this one a uh, zynous tyrosine kinase. So when this zynous tyrosine kinase is activated, it auto phosphorylates its tyrosine, and uh, this auto this activated zynous tyrosine kinase it activates the another associated protein called as a STAT. So signal transduction, transductions and activated transcription. So STAT uh, proteins. And uh, before activations, this STAT protein is in a monomer form. So when it activated, it formed as a dimer. This STAT protein, it formed as a dimer. And after formations of a dimer, now it can enter to the nucleus and a nucleus it bind to the promoter site of a gene and it enhances the transcription rate so you have studied the mechanism actions via the zynous zynous tyrosine kinase during a this mechanism of actions of a hormones also so uh, this hormone how it works that means it works uh, it activates the stat proteins and this stat proteins it enters the nucleus and where it binds to the promoter side of the gene and it activates the transcription so rate of the transcription and this pattern is not only followed by the prolactin uh, this uh, this pattern is also uh, other hormones like this uh, this uh, growth hormones and then this uh, this uh, epidermic growth factors and cytokines they also follow the same pathway that is the uh, zynous tyrosine kinase pathway for its uh, to show its uh, response to the cell so physiological effects so that is the function of uh, prolactin so generally it is together with a it is luteinizing hormone so this prolactin it promotes the formation of corpus luteum and the productions of Progesterone. The main function of prolactin is stimulations of growth of the mammary gland during pregnancy and the postpartum lactation period. And the growth of mammary gland uh, during pregnancy and postpartum lactation period in that other hormones this uh, estrogen and progesterone it also contributes for the for this actions so along with the this, uh, this prolactin hormone is the main hormone which stimulates the growth of the mammary gland during pregnancy and postpartum lactation period uh, for these functions uh, the other hormones like estrogen and progesterone they also contribute however for the lactogenesis so that means the secretions of milk on that it, this uh, estrogen and progesterone they have a depressant actions that means uh, this uh, estrogen and progesterone they inhibit the lactogenesis and this prolactin it stimulates or initiates the lactogenesis so that's why uh, so that's why the, uh, after the delivery so what happened uh, this the concentrations of estrogen and progesterone they are decreased and then the this prolactin hormone it initiates the lactogenesis so in pregnancy uh, generally this uh, this uh, milk secretion is uh, not occur because the concentrations of this uh, estrogen and progesterone they so is the inhibitory action. So after the delivery, the concentrations of the progesterone and estrogen so is decreased, and then this prolactin initiates the lactogenesis. So apart from these uh, lactogenic effects and the uh, these uh, stimulatory effects on the memory the development of the memory gland, this prolactin also activates the immune functions, and for the activations of the immune functions it stimulates the lymphocyte proliferation so the increased concentrations of prolactin it uh, inhibits the secretions of this gonadotropic releasing hormone 
like this uh, releasing hormone and then luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone so because of that what happen when there is a high concentrations of prolactin is there then it reduces the chances of this fertility and pregnancy during lactation so because of that uh, this uh, high concentrations of prolactin so that is the hyperprolactin prolactinemia so that is uh, always associated with this one uh, infertility so now uh, this one uh, this uh, disorder of what is prolactin hormones so what we call as this prolactin imbalance so hyper prolactinemia so that is the increase level of the prolactin in a serum so the causes for this uh, hyper prolactinemia are tumors in the lactotropes so presence of uh, this dopamine antagonist so hypothyroidism so usually this uh, always the hypothyroidism is associated with a high level of thyrotropin releasing hormone and then uh, there is hypothalamus or anterior anterior pituitary disorder and in case of the uh, renal failure the symptoms of this hyperprolactinemia are in case of the female uh, galactorrhea so amenorrhea and infertility so in male uh, galactorrhea impotence and infertility so now uh, we'll move on to the uh, this next hormone so which is secreted by a anterior pituitary gland so generally it is a anterior pituitary gland it uh, secretes uh, six hormones so these six hormones are it is acetyls and then uh, tsh fsh lh prolactin so gh growth hormone so this uh, growth hormone uh, you have studied this acetyl so this, uh, during the synthesis of acetyl what happen it is synthesized as a pro hormones that is a, a pre opio melanocortin so pomc like that this growth hormone is also synthesized in a uh, this somatotrophs as a pro hormone so uh, this uh, this pro hormone is converted to the mature growth hormone after the removal of uh, this some uh, this sequence so that is a uh, this uh, around 26 amino acid peptide when this uh, this 26 amino acid peptides from n terminal in it is removed then this pro hormone is converted to the mature growth hormone so that is a active growth hormone and this uh, this mature or active growth hormone is also a single polypeptide which is composed of 191 amino acids and its molecular mass is approximately 21.5 kilodalton it has a two disulfide bridge so you can see the structure of uh, this uh, growth hormone so prolactin hormone it is also single polypeptide and which contains a three sulfide bonds and here it contains a two sulfide bond so the growth the functions of growth hormone that depends on a relatively small portions of the molecule so because of that what happened uh, this, uh, if the growth hormone is partially hydrolyzed by chymotrypsin also it does not cancels the activity of growth hormone so the activity of uh, this growth hormone it relies on the relatively small portions of the molecule so its activity will not be lost even the partial hydrolysis by a enzyme so the structures structures that is the compositions of what is uh, growth hormones in a different species are very similar however there these hormones have a high degree of species specificity so that means the animals growth hormones cannot show biological functions in a human and the human growth hormones they cannot show biological response in case of the animal so they have a high degree of specificity though they have a uh, similarity structures so these are uh, the secretions 
of uh, this growth hormone. So that is under the control of uh, uh, this uh, neural, metabolic, and hormonal factors. Among these uh, different factors, these uh, hormones like this growth hormone releasing hormones and uh, this somatostatin. So they they are the important under regulations of this growth hormone. So growth hormone releasing hormones, which is secreted by this uh, hypothalamus. So it stimulates the secretions of growth hormones, whereas somatostatin, so that is a, which is also called as a growth hormone inhibitory hormone that inhibits the release of growth hormone. And these uh, both hormones are synthesized from a hypothalamus. So you have heard about the another hormones that is a protein called as a ghrelin and generally this ghrelin is secreted in a stomach and it is uh, generally involved in the uh, food intakes. Uh, it also able to stimulations of a growth hormones. So this ghrelin, uh, it, it stimulates the uh, this releasing of growth hormones and uh, this uh, the main function of ghrelin is that is the inducing of uh, this food intake. So overall effects of ghrelin is that is the promotes of obesity. So enhance the food intake and uh, the utilization of the food foods that is uh, to energy for the uh, for anabolism. So it promotes the obesity. So this growth hormones in the plasma, it is uh, transported by a specific uh, protein. Uh, the half-life for this growth hormone is around 20 to 50 minutes. And uh, the, the level of this growth hormones in a human beings, so that is undepend upon the age. And also it shows the, uh, this durinal variations. So uh, generally, in, uh, while talking about the durinal variations, that uh, this, the concentrations of growth hormones, it is high in the night and uh, in a sleeping uh, period. And then uh, its concentrations goes lower in the early morning. So the level of this growth hormone is high in case of a children. So during a growing phase and uh, maximal during a adolescent and the concentrations goes down, that is the lowest during an adult. So when the growth is generally not occur. So metabolic uh, functions. So it's a uh, multifunctional hormones, uh, which promotes uh, this postnatal growth of skeletal and soft tissue through a direct and indirect actions. So these direct actions means that directly uh, this growth hormones, so they uh, they, after the releasing of growth hormones, so they are, they interest to the circulations and they bind with the specific receptors that is present on a target tissue to show the, uh, this physiological response on the cell. Apart from that, the, it also shows its functions by a indirect actions. This indirect actions means that it stimulates the another uh, hormones. So another uh, these factors to show its function. So the the these uh, the another factors which is stimulated by a growth hormone for to show its actions. They are called as a this insulin like factor. So insulin like growth factors that is called as a IGF or this insulin like growth factor. It is also called as a somatomedin. So don't uh, confuse about the somatostatin and the somatomedin. So this somatostatin means that is the uh, hormone which is secreted by a hypothalamus and which inhibits the releasing of, releasing of growth hormone. The somatomedin. somatomedin. Somatomedin is the uh, this, uh, growth factors. So which, which, which synthesis is increased by a growth hormones. And uh, these somatomedins are also called as a insulin-like growth factor, IGF. 
and why these uh, these somatomedins they are called as a insulin like growth factors so generally the mechanism of actions of these insulin like growth factors so they their mechanism of action is similar with a insulin so that is so generally what happened is growth hormone so uh, like uh, prolactin hormones these growth hormones so they uh, shows its action on a specific cell via the this uh, jack this kinase tyrosine pathway so that is a jack start uh, pathway this uh, this insulin like growth factor so their receptors are uh, heterotrimeric uh, receptors so uh, like uh, this uh, uh, the receptor is similar to the uh, this uh, receptor uh, is similar with a uh, insulin receptors this uh, somatomedin or insulin growth factors it is of uh, two types so one is igf1 and another one is a uh, igf2 so this igf2 is generally active during a fetal life so that is the prenatal life and igf1 so it is generally active after the birth and it is activate it activate through, throughout the life so this igf1 so it it is active after postnatal life so igf2 is active during a prenatal life and this igf1 is active during a postnatal life so main function of this uh, growth hormone is that is the it stimulate the cell proliferation and maturation in many tissues particularly bone cartilage and muscle so the, so because of that it is involved in the growth of the animals and apart from that this growth hormone so the functions of uh, these uh, these cell proliferation and maturation in the tissues it is shown by the both uh, both ways that is the uh, through the direct actions as well as the indirect actions so apart from that it is growth hormone it also shows the effects on the metabolisms of uh, these different biomolecules uh, like this uh, protein metabolism nucleic acid metabolism lipid metabolism and carbohydrate metabolism so uh, on protein its overall activity so the growth hormone shows is the protein anabolisms. So that is the it shows is the that uh, is a positive nitrogen balance. So that is the it enhances the protein anabolism. For that it increases the amino acid uptake into the cells, and after that it also enhances the translation and the transcription. So which aid the synthesis of a protein so which increases the synthesis of a protein and apart from that uh, this is the growth hormone it also inhibits the proteolysis in the body uh, and uh, so and it also uh, inhibits the use of amino acids as a source of the energy for that it promotes the Lipolysis, so that is the it promotes the use of fat deposits as a source of energy. So, which makes the uh, high availability of amino acid for the synthesis of protein. So, nucleic acid, so it increases the activity of uh, this DNA and RNA polymerases, so which accelerates the transcription rate and after that increases the translation, so which aid on the protein biosynthesis. So in lipids, it exerts its lipolytic action. So that means it increases the degradations of a deposit fats. And so that uh, there is the increased availability of free fatty acids in the circulations. And the cells, they uptake these uh, free fatty acids for oxidation and utilizes uh, these free fatty acids as a source of energy. So in a carbohydrate, uh, it this uh, growth hormone it switches the antagonist to the insulin. So it 
so which is the anti insulin activity so for that uh, this uh, this growth hormone it is also called as a uh, diabetogenic uh, hormone so generally what happens this growth hormone it decreases the absorption uptake of uh, this glucose from circulation to the cell and then it also inhibits the glycolysis so this glycolysis is the pathway which is used by the cell to make a energy from a glucose so apart from that uh, this in liver this uh, growth hormone it enhances the gluconeogenesis and this glucose are releases to the circulation so which causes which causes the hyperglycemic state so that is uh, behave as a diabetogenic so uh, apart from that this uh, growth hormones it increases the glycogenesis so that is the synthesis of glycogen from a glucose so generally uh, this growth hormones it decreases the utilization of glucose to the different cell for the energy purpose so by decreasing uh, this glucose transport and also inhibiting the uh, glycolysis in a different cell so it is a diabetogenic hormone so with so due to the inability to uptake of uh, this uh, glucose by the cell and increase glucose output from a liver the concentrations of the glucose in a circulation is high in presence of growth hormone so which lead to the hyperglycemic state and so on to the diabetic mellitus so this uh, growth hormones apart from uh, this uh, anterior pituitary gland it is also secreted by the other organs such as the gonads or uh, this placenta and mammary glands and the nervous systems and the hormones which is synthesized in uh, these organs they shows its mechanism its it uh, these hormones which is synthesized in these organs they act as a they uh, they acts they elucidate its functions as a autocrine or paracrine way so autocrine means uh, these uh, these cells which is the uh, its uh, this target cell is the same cell that is the autocrine and this paracrine means uh, the the cells so this uh, functions to the neighbor cell and uh, in uh, organs such as in a gonads so it shows the uh, this proliferation of this uh, gonad cells so in gonads it is involved in uh, this sexual differentiations uh, pubertal maturations estrogenesis gametogenesis and Uh, ovulations in nervous systems also this growth hormones it favors this development cell proliferation differentiation and survival and it participates in the cognitive and the behavior functions so in overall what happened is growth hormones so they are involved in the uh, where it acts that is either is in the skeletal tissues or in the other soft tissues it so it act it shows it acts as the cell proliferation and the differentiation of the specific cells on the specific targeted uh, organs so as uh, discuss in the earlier that means this growth hormones it shows its functions by two ways that is a uh, one from a direct action that means growth hormones itself bind to the its specific receptors present on the target cells uh, apart from that this growth hormones it also uh, stimulates the synthesis of the other factor so which is called as a somatomedin or a insulin like growth factors so this uh, igf so already we have discussed that is igf of a uh, two types that is igf1 and igf2 and this igf2 is the major form in the fetus so it participate on the development of the fetus in the uterus and this uh, utero life and this igf1 uh, it generally active at the all the stage of development after the postnatal and this uh, this this insulin like growth factor so their structure is similarity with a insulin so that's why it is called as a insulin like growth factor and they are also called as a somatomedian so which is different from the somatostatin so the characteristics of uh, this uh, this insulin growth factor 
one instead of like growth factor one. So its concentration in plasma is regulated by uh, growth hormones. So generally it is a uh, insulin like growth factor one so it is involved in a this one uh, sulfations and glucosamine incorporations into the cartilage proteoglycan so generally uh, it involved in the development of the connective tissues so it increases the mitotic activity of uh, fibroblast so uh, it has a mimics action of the insulin in muscle and the adipose tissue uh, generally, the functions of this IGF-1 is via the PI3K, PI3K AKT pathway. So, uh, this insulin-like growth factor 1, it is majorly produced in a liver. And generally, the synthesis of this insulin-like growth factor is interfered by the malabsorption. So, when the persons have a malabsorption or malnutrition, so the, the synthesis of it is insulin like growth factor is demonized or decreased. So the mechanism of actions of this growth hormone. So the actions of uh, growth hormone generally it acts on the it regulates the it increases it regulates the gene transcriptions uh, via the stat proteins. So which the which the the steps how the hormone activates these stat proteins you have uh, studied uh, during a prolactin also so the steps are the similar so that means so this growth hormone first it binds to the specific receptors presents on the surface of the cell and after the binding of growth hormone uh, these cell receptor they get activated and uh, this activated cell receptor it activates the uh, this uh, gynus kinase gynus tyrosine kinase uh, receptors. So this gynus tyrosine kinase receptor generally associate with the receptors, uh, these cell receptors, so membrane receptors. So after the activations of this gynus uh, tyrosine kinase, so it get a, it autophosphorides the tyrosines presence on that and this phosphorated tyrosines, it activates the, uh, these uh, proteins presence on the cell. So like this uh, stat protein. So this uh, activated stat protein, they form as a dimer. And after the formations of the dimer, it enter to the nucleus. So, and on nucleus, it bind to the promoter region of the gene and it initiate the rate of the transcriptions. So uh, these uh, growth, har growth hormones, it not only utilizes the STAT pathway for the increased transcriptions of a target gene, it also use the other pathway also, uh, like this uh, MAP kinase. So that is a mitogen activated phosphorylase, uh, this phosphate kinase. And also it uses the another pathway that is the PI3 that is the phosphoinositol tri, uh, tri uh, phosphoinositol uh, trikinase pathway apart from the Jackstat pathway it also used the other pathways like this MAP, kin this MAP kinase pathway and PI3 kinase for the increasing the rate of the transcriptions the cell so in some cases, uh, there is also this protein kinase C is also involved in some uh, this growth hormone action. So this uh, insulin like growth factor one is one of the protein which synthesis is activated by a growth hormone. And uh, when this IGF-1 is activated, so they act, this was the mechanism of actions via the activating of insulin receptor substrate. And this uh, the activations of insulin receptor substrate that is also done by a uh, insulin. So that's why uh, the mechanism of actions of this insulin like growth factor is factor. to the function of a uh, insulin. So now uh, this one uh, disorders of uh, this uh, growth hormone uh, secretions. So when there is the excessive secretions of a growth hormone so that means that when there is a high concentrations of a growth hormones 
is present then it lead to the gigantism so that is the the persons become a more tall so that's the increase in a growth and generally this gigantisms uh, the causes for the gigantism is that is the uh, due to the tumor in a somatotrophs in young children or adolescent so acromegaly so causes for this acromegaly is this benign tumor of uh, pituitary gland so ectopic this uh, growth hormone releasing hormone secretions by or uh, is carcinoids or tumors of pancreas lung or adrenal gland so generally this uh, growth hormone releasing hormone so it is normally it is secreted from a hypothalamus and sometimes it is also secreted by a uh, ectopic that is the order than the hypothalamus like the uh, there is a uh, this carcinoids or tumors of pancreas lungs or adrenal gland so the symptoms for this acromegaly is facial changes uh, due to the thickening of bones and cartilages also enlargement of hands feet and various organs and generally the patients of acromegaly it this was the altered glucose tolerance test and hyperglycemia so this is about the uh, growth hormone so the remaining these uh, two hormones of this pituitary gland that is the hormones secreted by the post posterior pituitary gland so that is the oxytocin and vasopressin uh, this uh, they, they, it will be covered in the next class so that is on a friday so thank you for your uh, this one uh, your participations in uh, this lecture so have a good day so if you have any query uh, you can ask via the uh, different uh, this one uh, via the different uh, this from viber or from by mail so okay thank you have a good day